welcome back and this will be our conclusion on epigenetics for today i'm very excited this is going to be a bit more of a chatting session than anything else i'm very excited always about that please note that i'm a quantum life and quantum soul consultant i'm not a medically trained doctor psychologist or psychiatrist should you display any symptoms that are worrying to you your first priority is to contact a medically trained professional please okay so when we think about epigenetics and what we've learned, I've, I've now given you some examples and not everything was covered um, of what epigenetics is. How does it work? What can you inherit? How can you get rid of those inherited things? We need to look at what we can do in our day to day lives and in our day to day activities so that our own behavior and our own circumstances and our own actions and choices are positive um, and everything that i will mention today will take away negative things and will add positive things to the epigenetic markers something that i'm not going to mention that i forgot to put in and i'm just going to mention it now is exercise for example you know there are so many people whose parents don't exercise and then they break that pattern and they start exercising and their kids exercise and their kids exercise and their kids exercise exercise is very important for your body please 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 and it's also good for your soul and your spirit it uplifts the spirit it uplifts the soul please 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 exercise okay so what i'm going to look at today is the environment that you create for yourself many times you know I, and even i myself will say that's a negative environment and so what i would do is if something is a negative environment and i have found that i am unable to change it into a positive environment i avoid that environment but oftentimes we are the people who create our own negative environment and that's often happens when we are alone, when we don't have anything specific to do of when we are bored, or when we are stressed, we and our own attitudes create a negative environment. For example, if you focus on negative things, you will feel negative. Okay, your own attitude will determine um, how you feel and how you are perceived. Now, many people say to me, but that's just who I am. I am a realist. I understand that I'm also a realist, but I'm also an optimist. Okay. And you might say, but that you can't be two things at the same time. Yes, I'm realistically optimistic, right? And so my attitude towards things, I can choose to see this. Oh, this is the end of the world. And this will never, my life will never be great again. And the, or the world owes me something because of this and this and this that's happened to, to me in my life. It will not change your circumstances in fact it will make it probably stay the same or even worse uh you need to be grateful for the things that have gone wrong and you need to and by that i'm not saying have toxic positivity because toxic positivity is i will not feel bad i will just be positive the whole time that's toxic positivity which will only make your it will only suppress your negative feelings what I'm saying is in the moment you are allowed to go like this has been a tough day and I am just going to take a moment for myself it's been a tough day I'm going to sit outside I'm going to do nothing for half an hour I'm going to drink a cup of coffee I'm going to garden I'm going to put on my shoes I'm going to go jog for 30 minutes that is having a positive attitude saying okay this bad thing has happened I am allowed as a human being to feel a momentary thing about it but I'm not going to focus on it and wallow in it and let it ruin my whole day. I'm going to do something in the moment to try and process it and then I'll move on. Okay, so another thing of your environment is, and this is something that I often find with myself, is taking offense of what people say and do. <laughs> it's like drinking poison and hoping someone else will die of the poison that you drank they will not they the only person that dies from offense is the person who takes the offense so it would be better for you to not take offense and to look for the good in people and to see the small things that they are doing right and not to focus they're like I've been to places and afterwards, like I've, I, I realized I, that is so wrong and it brings such 
shame in that moment you think oh i cannot believe this happened you know but then you move on you take responsibility for the thing you've done wrong and you go on but um you know if you you'll have the most amazing time and someone says one thing and you take offense and everything they've done right the food they've given you the house they've opened to you the hospitality they've displayed the kindness they've shown all means nothing because you've taken offense to one thing they've said or done and so the best thing you can do for yourself and for your epigenetics is to not take offense okay the next thing is gratitude i am going to do a whole podcast on gratitude and i hope to have some people that will join me for those podcasts so me and you will be listening together and some people will teach us on gratitude but it is scientifically proven that gratitude literally repels negativity and so if it starts going bad if your day starts taking a turn for the worse take 10 minutes and just focus on everything that has gone right that day and i often say to people like even when something horrible has happened to you say i'm grateful this has happened because now i've learned a lesson you will always have something to be grateful for again don't use it as a toxic positivity method it's not what it's supposed to do it's supposed to keep you focused on what is good and to realize that yes this one thing has gone horribly wrong and i feel terrible and i feel shame or whatever about it but i'm so grateful that i've now learned the lesson i can get rid of the shame i've learned the lesson i know not to do it again the next thing I'm doing, I'll take responsibility, I'll go and apologize. And then if I've apologized and everything's right, I'll have gratitude that I've learned this lesson and I have gratitude that it didn't end up being worse. Okay, so gratitude is, uh, you know, you have people like in South Africa, we really have a great ambassador for gratitude. Um, Leandi Durand, she often speaks about how gratitude has changed her life. And she always says, whatever bad, good thing happens, just be grateful and just keep gratitude. And she often also is, she's very verbal about the fact that it doesn't always go good with her, but she's always grateful. And I think that's amazing. Then the next thing is, that which you focus on, you will grow. If you focus on the negative things in your life, if you focus on the things that are not going your way, if you focus on the problems that you have, if you focus on the fact that you don't have money, if you focus on the fact that you are overworked, if you focus on the fact that you're unhappy, if you focus on the fact that this person has again said this or this person has done that, all those negative things you focus on, you will grow. It will become something. And so rather spend your time growing positive things than negative things. And this picture for me is so profound when I got it. It was literally, it's as if someone is spoon feeding this little plant its water. And it's beautiful for me because that's what we do. We nurture, if we nurture our pain and our wounds and we nurture our problems and we nurture all of these things, and it becomes what we talk about, what we focus on day in, day out for years at end, you will be unhappy and you will probably start feeling depressed and, and have other problems, you know. So again, I'm not saying you are not allowed to feel negative at all. I'm just saying identify what the root of your problem is. Speak to someone. Uh, you know, and it doesn't have to be in a formal setting, reach out to a friend, just tell someone, you know, I'm feeling like this, and I'm really tired. And, you know, people often will try and find solutions sometimes if you need them to not give you a solution and to just listen, you need to verbalize that also you can't expect them to take offense Well, they just started telling me what to do to fix it, <laughs> you know, verbalize your expectation in that sense. And um, yes, and nurture rather spend time thinking on of things that are good and healthy and brings you joy words thoughts feelings actions ideas the time we spend that has power in your epigenetic markers okay because that in essence is your environment okay love you need to love you need to love unconditionally and the only way to do that is to know how to sacrifice uh, your life will only have meaning to the extent that you lay it down for others and grant luton said this he's from beth chikun ministries and it just it's something that has changed my perspective profoundly and love does not mean if you are wrong i always tell you sometimes love is where even when you are wrong i keep quiet and i support you now 
I, I will not keep quiet if someone is sinning. But there's a difference between saying, well, you are doing this and this and this and going like, listen, I love you very much. But I really think you need to rethink this thing because I don't know if it's the right thing to do. Okay, I'm not talking about don't cover sin. Don't cover injustice. Don't cover unrighteous acts. Don't cover someone doing something that's wrong. That's not love. Okay, that is the opposite of love. But loving someone is to sacrifice yourself, to sacrifice your own needs for the benefit of another person. And even if it, you know, does make you unhappy for a while, in the end, when that person has a breakthrough or is successful, that is worth it. If you think about the most beautiful example of sacrifice and love is parents towards children you only realize how much your own parents sacrificed for you when you are a grown up and they've, you're now caring for yourself and they've stopped sacrificing for you you know but that's the most a parent will literally take the clothes off of their back and give it to their children they will do anything they there's not if there's an amount they will not put money on how much they love you and on how much they are willing to sacrifice for your happiness okay and we need to have that same love back for our parents that's why respecting your parents are so important but we need to also take that example and into the world and say i will love unconditionally and sometimes it is tough okay and that's why we're commanded to do it is because it is sometimes tough but you need to love people and lay your life down and that's when it will start really when your life will start have meaning okay the next thing is humility when we often when we uh, put ourselves in a position of pride I think I'm better than you. I deserve better. I deserve this. I have, I can get that. Uh, I am right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. You know, or um, yes, yeah, just thinking that you are you having pride's definition is having an inflated sense of self, thinking more of yourself and thinking you deserve more than what you actually do, thinking you're more important than you actually are. Another example of the opposite of humility is contempt. Uh, looking down on people, thinking that you are better than people. You know, um, I know of so many people that if they do interviews, they do it in a restaurant and they will not hire a person based on how they treat the waiter because the waiter for so many people are seen as less than them or, you know, I will not be a waiter, that's what we need me. I mean, that's just, um, you know, treat people equally. We are all human beings. No one is more important than another one. And I think uh, this generation has started doing that, like treating, realizing the importance of money and the class divisions it makes doesn't give you the right to think that you are better than other people. Have humility. When you really serve people, be the least. Always be first to apologize. Always be first to ask, oh, did I maybe do something wrong? Always look at yourself first and go, I've done this and this and this wrong. And if I don't want this person to forever be mad at me for doing this and this and this wrong, I cannot hold this and this and this that they did against me, against them. I need to forgive them. I need to have humility. A great man is always willing to be little. Okay. And be, and, and I mean, us as human beings, we struggle with this and our Western mindset is all about success, reaching this goal, reaching that goal, reaching that goal. But the, the more you start realizing that you are only as good as the community you have around you that supports you and people support people who are, who, who have humility, they, because people with pride and contempt don't need support because I'm better than you. Okay. So these are all important things. And Epigenetics, uh, these will be passed on to epigenetics. Sorry, I'm just going to go back. Parents who struggle with pride, if you think you are better and you don't, we don't care about the emotions, I'll stop crying. Why are you crying? You don't cry. You have nothing. I'll give you something to cry about. You know, that turns kids into narcissists, uh, which, you know, is, is, is an, a horrible epigenetic marker to have a, a predisposition to, to become a narcissist you know and so people that really have humility and really have love in all aspects they they cannot make a child a narcissist okay serving others okay if we stop trying to receive the whole time and think what can i see a need 
fill that need. I see a problem, I solve that problem. I, If it's within your means to do something, then do it. Don't say, well, I'm actually going to mess up with my couch time today. I really am so tired. All I want to do is just lie down, but it's just being a, a, an exhausting day. It's not been an exhausting life. Do what you can to help other people, to serve other people. I have a friend and it's such an amazing testimony. Um, they really are amazing people and they've been doing these amazing things for other people. And now they are in a situation where they need support from other people and people are showing up like, I mean, over and beyond what can be expected or should be done. And her mother said too, but this is because we've done so much good for other people that we can accept this. It's not too much to accept because we've done this and more. And so always try and rather give and before you want to receive and don't give and go like, well, I did this and this and no one even said thank you. You know, um, then you didn't really give. Then you trade it. Uh, if you give, you expect nothing back. But if you give something and you expect something back, then that's actually called trading and not giving. So really, if you are giving something, make sure that you give it with the intention of giving. But in saying that, some people sometimes also, when they are in a situation where they need receiving, they have too much pride to receive. Swallow that pride. Receive. This is your moment for receiving. And when the opportunity comes, you will be easier to give as well. Okay, then wisdom and innocence. I got this picture of this boy playing in, in the field. I mean, that's just the picture of innocence. If you think of innocence, all kids are born innocent, okay? And innocence is something that you lose due to trauma, bad things that's happened to you, et cetera, et cetera. And what I found is that there's this strange thing that you see with el the elderly and children. They both ha have this innocence thing, you know, where you where you um, feel like you can tend and nurture to them. But also it's these two children because they have no filter and elders because they've seen it all really will tell you the truth, you know, and, and wisdom comes from elders. And if we don't sit with our elders and talk to the elders and understand what they've learned in their life, we will make the same mistakes that we will pass on. And so sit with old people and talk to them listen to their stories if your grandparents are still alive take a day and just make a video of them and their lives so that you can teach these wisdoms to your children ask them if they had their whole entire life over again what would they change what did they do different and follow that advice but also so that's the wisdom of the elderly but you must have it and the heart of you must have innocence to say that you would you what you are doing is, is doing out of innocence it's not doing it to get something back or to get what i can out of the situation you know and think of what is important in your life spend time on the things that are important on your mental health i don't know how many people i've told this said this line to but if you go to work and you are working while you are very sick that is self abuse my friend and whenever something bad happens to you, let's say that you have a mental breakdown or God forbid you die, that, pe that person who's employed you will replace you, okay? So having a job and succeeding in that job and fulfilling the need that the job creates is good, but not to the detriment of yourself. You need to take care of your physical, your emotional and your mental health, okay? If you don't do that, it will be a negative marker that you pass down. If it does... And this is another thing. If something doesn't matter in 10 years, is it really worth getting upset over? You know, uh, we are short triggered and short fused and you need to stop yourself for a moment and say, this really doesn't actually matter. I need to let it go. Uh, this is not worth like I, this does not matter in 10 years. I will not make a fight about it in my relationships. If this won't hurt me in 10 years. Then why have this fight now? Okay, so the innocence of saying, maybe this person didn't mean to make me feel like this. I'll just voice it and say like, next time, please, can you not do, do this? Don't make a fight about everything and be rude about it. And then mindfulness. Mindfulness meaning, uh, this is, a, they call this the RAIN. I think you call it an acronym, right? R-A-I-N, R -A -I -N, RAIN. Okay, and mindfulness is about living in the moment and, and not 
letting the moment pass by without appreciating it. So recognize what is happening around you. Wow, my entire family is together for Grand's 80th. I don't see these people on often, so I'm going to recognize what is happening. This is a special occasion. I will allow life to be adjusted as it is to think maybe I should reach out to my cousins a bit more maybe I should do a bit more of this and that investigate what a gentle curious uh, attention you can give ask your cousins or your family members how are you doing are you okay tell me about your life how's your marriage how's your children okay and nurture with loving presence when you are present don't be present in anger and revenge be present in love, okay? That's what mindfulness is. Don't be a robot. Don't just live, you know, we get into these cycles and life does that where we just focus on the task at hand and that's a robot's job, right? Stop, breathe, you are a human being, be mindful of the situation. Okay, expectations. Grant Luton said this, this is one of the other things the, that really profoundly meant something to me. Expectations are premeditated resentments and disappointments. Your expectations of, let's say, I have a gift, I'm gonna give this gift to you. I have an expectation of how happy you will be or how grateful you will be. Then you don't react in that way. And then I sort of feel like, why did I give you this gift? And you don't appreciate it. Or, you know, maybe you have an expectation of what marriage will be. And then you get there and, your expectation is not fulfilled, then your partner feels that they are not good enough because they're not filling your expectation. Um, or we have expectations of activities that people must do with us or for us. And we often don't voice these expectations. expectations. We feel that people must smell that we want them. <laughs> and then we get upset when they don't do it, but they never knew. And because we are individuals, we need to understand you cannot be upset when your expectations aren't met. Okay? The only way you can be upset is if you actually voiced it and it's a, a reasonable expectation. I'm working until seven. Is there any way that you can please make food tonight? Yes, I can do it. Get home. No food is made. Hubby is lying on the couch on their phone and you ask, where's the food? And they're like, I was waiting for you to get home. And you're like, I asked you to make food. Oh, yes, I just thought I'd not do it. Then you can be upset because you actually voiced your expectation. But 90% of the things that we expect of people aren't really reasonable. Um, it's actually an expectation that we can fulfill ourselves. If you have an expectation that someone must every single day open all of the doors in the house, the first person to wake up must open all of the doors in the house, then you wake up, three people are awake. You told no one this, now you're upset, none of the doors are open, you start opening all the doors. That's not a fair expectation. That's something that you want, you can do it. Don't have that expectation. Don't look at people and life with expectations because we will be disappointed and i'm going to give you some examples okay people thought that working from home will be looking like this you'll be sitting at a desk some people are sitting on a couch you know in their pajamas still working okay another one is uh, someone tried to replicate this cat that they made with eggs horrible fail um expectations of marriage right that you'll be sitting on the couch every night talking with each other and the reality is now you'll just lie on the couch on your phone together so instead of lying at, at your homes before you were married um texting each other now you're just doing the same thing on the couch together okay uh having kids thinking oh i'm gonna make this child this beautiful room and then the room ends up being a mess and they draw on the walls okay and so we see that our expectations often life's humor is that it will not meet those expectations so it's probably better not to have them in the first place okay in order to change your epigenetic market so let's just bring a hone all of this back into what we are actually doing in order to change your epigenetics right or in order to hand down positive epigenetics first of all you need to work on yourself before you work on other people. Don't go around telling your whole family how they must fix themselves. First be an example, fix yourself, have the testimony of how it's worked for you, what has changed your life, 
wait until people ask me oh my word what have you done you look so different you've acting so different then you can tell them don't go wrong oh my word this amazing thing has happened oftentimes we need to wait for people to notice it themselves and so first work on yourself first identify your own problems fix yourself and out of your own victories you can then assist other people when they ask for it okay find your trapped and inherited emotions and negative patterns and then if you do a session with me we will release them but you need to understand if you don't think differently if you don't choose to think differently and you just think the same then the epigenetic marker will be removed but your thinking will make a new one so you need to renew your mind so you need to break the patterns you need to get rid and remove and release all of these negative things find them remove them release them change your thinking to get rid of the problems okay so you need to change your thoughts what you spend time on how you perceive others you need to change how you think in this way you need to change people aren't out to get you most people are just out to survive themselves right imagine if all of us worried more about the people next to us instead of ourselves then no one would have needs that needed to be filled because people will be filling those needs instead of filling their own needs and getting more and more and more and more for themselves so try and be the type of person that helps other people and help will come automatically for you try and think that maybe someone said something and it is quite offensive but give them the benefit of the doubt and in a loving way just say you know um this was a nice for me or if you can just forgive them just let it go okay the the last thing is live a humble life with excellence this is also something that grant luton said that i thought is absolutely profound he he just wants if if his life is over he wants people to say that he lived a humble life but he lived it excellently and i just absolutely love that okay so thank you so much for following this course with me and if you stuck out to the end i appreciate it so much i think the the wealth and the riches of it um came out at the end you know and so i really really am appreciative of listening and i hope you've learned something if you have any questions please you are so welcome to comment and i'll get back to you as soon as i can and yes thank you so much you must have a lovely day and i'll see you on our next, next podcast